hello and welcome back. If I've got my dates right, this video should be going out on the 24th of December, so Christmas Eve. So I hope everybody's enjoying the festive season. So I've got a handful of models running around the railway here at the moment. 262 with some open wagons there. Let's just get back over here to the, the three rail. Got a pair of, pair of trains coming down the outside here, 262 and the Cobra. It's quite satisfying when that happens. Off they go. One under the elevated section and one through the station. And here comes the Victoria again. I think we saw this model last week. So we are going to have a look at the uh, RS7 set in a moment. You can just see we've got the, uh, the set down, down here. I bought that just over a year ago. The, the models aren't perfect in it, but we'll, we'll have a look at that in a moment. Let's just have a, another run round with this. Let's see if we can get the Victoria coming through the station here. Charging through there. So I'm just going to jump the other side and we'll have a, a quick glance at these models from over there. And then we'll get the lid off that box. Here yeah, we've got the, the Kobo on the other side of the railway now. Victoria just about to charge through the station, so we'll pick up on that. And they're all being really well behaved at the moment, although they are beginning to pick up a little bit of pace since I, I set them all running. Let's see if we can get all the way around with that. Make a tremendous sound when they're all underway. There we go, all the way around. Now I think I'm going to pick up the controls for the Victoria. And let's see if we can uh, anticipate her coming into the station. A good plan. So we'll dial out a little bit of power. And a gentle stop there. Looks pretty good. So I'm just going to pop these controls down. And then where's the 262 tank loco? So let's we'll see if we can bring that to a stop there. Got that just in time. Now what have we got? We've got the, uh, the Kobo over there. Let's see if we can stop that under the window. So just coming around under the bridges. A little bit more elevated, and we'll get a gentle stop about there. And that just leaves the uh, 264 tank loco with the suburban style coaches. Well, I'll see if I can bring that the rest in the station. I always misjudge when I bring this one to a stop, it slows down a little bit more than I anticipate. So let's get that. Not too bad. So that's quite an impressive group of models sitting in the uh, station there. Nothing very special about any of them. They just look terrific, all, all sitting there together. So I'll just pop these controls down now. I've got in my hand. And we'll, uh, we'll come back to this lot in a moment. So here is the uh, RS7 set. Now I think this set came along in... Uh, 1960, I think it ran till 62, and then it was replaced by the RS27 set, which was the same set as far as I can tell, but with Super 4 track in it. This has the Series 3, and before this set there was the R3M set, and this, this was uh, when this first came along in 1958, and I think that had Series 3 in it. Um, it may, may have had um, a standard, but I think the, the main difference was the, the models had uh, uh, Mark II style couplings. So we've got this lovely image there. Wouldn't it be terrific if you could get a box which had all of that in? That would be uh, that would be the most wonderful Christmas gift, wouldn't it? Um, there we go. These are, these labels are just stuck on now. The box lid is not in terribly good condition. We'll just have a quick look at it. I will lift it off. It is missing some significant amounts of uh, card, as you can see down there. So it is very very soft. So I'm just going to lift that off. So I said earlier that the models 
in the set aren't necessarily great condition, but it wasn't the uh, the models which which I really bought it for. It was the uh, the card insert there, which I think is is quite quite lovely. I don't think they did this for very long with this this imagery. Let's just have a, a quick look at the uh, the corner of this box because there is some pricing present there. I don't know whether you can read the the pen there. Hopefully, I'm getting getting the focus there. And that is uh, was that 73 and six possibly there. And I don't know what this scribbling is referring to there. So it is all rather tired the box, but it sort of has done its job really. Nothing scribbled on the inside. Just sort of grey, grey brown cardboard. Let's, let's just put that there. But the, those pictures really are, are quite something. There's a number of variations of them. Let's just jump back to this lovely looking set. So we've got the uh, Series 3 track, a small oval of um, Series 3. We've got a uncoupling rail and a straight rail. Tracks in, in not too bad a condition. I know we've got the models. One of these, I can't remember which was missing its underframe when I got it. So I knew they were in, in fairly poor condition when, when they came to me. And they're, they're quite scuffed. And the decal on the far side of this model is missing. But let's just have a look at that, uh, that track system going into that station. I don't know what station this is. I've had a, had a read in Pat Hammond's book and it doesn't mention it as far as I can see, but um, somebody, somebody may well recognise which station that is. This looks to be quite an impressive building at the, at the top here. It's this lovely sort of half-tone sort of effect. Very, very, uh, very striking. And the uh, RS7 but it doesn't necessarily make the model stand out. But what, what I'll do, I'll, I'll get these items out and we'll, uh, we'll have a look at them on, on the track. Not quite on the rails. This is the, uh, the driving car. It's got the motor buggy where my thumb is. And you can see the, the decal's definitely not there and they do have different underframes. I don't remember which one was missing its underframe when I got it, but um, it's also missing another part, one of, one of the seating units out of, out of the, uh, the trailer car is missing. So it should have a, a part back here. So obviously you can't get seating in the back of the, uh, the driver car. If you have a look here, we've got uh, the two separate seating units. So both units would have this section, seating unit A, and the trailer car would have seating unit B as well. See, they were, they were both sold separately. But sadly, that's missing a, a, out of my uh, trailer car. And then we've got the set there, RS7, diesel rail car train set, and then the uh, list of uh, components that make up the set there. So I think they're quite nice models. I think the mould was um, made in uh, such so that they could get two slightly different moulds to make both parts of the model with relative ease. I think they had a drop-in section because this one's got extra detailing at the back. So um, yeah, quite, quite uh, economical on trying's part. They're always, always trying to make things get more, more out of less. So nice ribbed roofs. And the, the screws have got uh, a little bit of grey paint on. I don't know whether I've already said that. But um, that's the 1960 catalogue and the seating units for, for coaches did, tend, did sort of show up this year. Let's just go across a couple of pages in here. Um, there we go. Seat units. So in 1960, there was a variety of seat units for different models, and I think some of the tri the, the the transcontinental stuff got seat units available as well. Um, and it go goes on and explains how to how to fit them. Now I'll, I'll pop that in at the end for you to have a look at, and at the at the end of the video. But in 1961, the uh, the center car, the diesel rail car center unit became available, and that's um, R334. And there was a unit, seating unit for that also became available. I don't know whether we can get focus on there. That's 287 seat unit for diesel centre car. So, yeah, I think that's a quite quite an interesting addition. Uh, I think at some point the seat units were just became a standard fitted item. And then once they went along to um, the sort of slightly longer 10-inch coaches, seat units were, were part of the deal. Um, so in, initially the... Um, the shorter coaches, right, let's have an example of a shorter coach. So the, these didn't have um, removable roofs. Some of them were um, glued on and la later they ended up with a screw in the bottom. I can't remember, it says what year they, 
they stopped putting the screw in the bottom of the, uh, the coaches and the catalogue. I think it's 1960, but um, I should have had a look when I had the catalogues out. So let's get these units on the railway and we'll see if we can get a, a quick go with them. So let's pop that on there. And then let's put that on there now. Imagine you've got this set for your birthday throughout the year and then Christmas comes along. You're obviously going to be wanting the centre car, aren't you? So we've got the centre car over here. Let's see if we can get this out. Let's have a, a quick look. This one's had uh, some problems with its couplings in the past. So they must have been replaced, so they've been uh, bolted on. So this one does have the seating unit already in it. I don't know whether it came with it in it, but it, when it came to me, it's in a similar condition to the, the other two parts. But uh, I think that'll look quite nice. Let's just have a look at the bottom. There we go, we've got that nice nut and bolt. The, the, the bolt runs right the way through the model and holds, holds the roof on and the underframe. So that's, that's quite a nice thing. So let's get that on the rails as well. So I think we should have had a look at the box while we're there. It's always nice to, to have a look at the packaging. Let's, let's get that on there. There we go, we'll have a quick look at the packaging whilst we're at it. So box in fairly tidy condition. Get it the right way up. Whoops. And there we go, diesel rail car centre unit. So R334. So I think the, uh, the rubber stamping's all complete on the other end, doesn't seem to be. Actually, I don't know what that is. There is some pricing, there's something written in pencil there, I can't quite, is it 775? Not quite sure. Anyway, let's, let's pop that to one side, get that under there, and now I think I've isolated the Victoria, let's open this up. So, but that, the tank loco should stay put. Where are we? So we'll get the controls. We're all running as one railway, I've already set that. So let's give that a little power. Ribbed wheels, of course, making that a quite tremendous sound on the rails. Run around the back of the turntable. Be a bit jumpy on the diamond, I imagine. No surprise there. I think I left all the points in in the right position. So I think we'll go the other direction with that now. Just see how we do with that. We'll stand back a bit. Down it comes past the double O station. And we'll just slow it down as it comes around the curve. And we'll bring that to a gentle stop there. I think what we'll do, we'll move a few things around on the railway and see if we can get that up to the elevated section. So I think if we get rid of the, the tank loco with the um, with the goods wagons there. So let's switch the points again. And I think we need the this yellow one curved. Let's see if we can uh, so I'm gonna swap hands with the camera. It's starting to get quite heavy holding the camera for this length of time. Let's sort of back that into then. We'll see how we do with that. See if I can stop that in the appropriate place and we'll uncouple it. Actually, I've just overrun. So let's just roll forwards a little. There we go. I'm just going to leave that just there and we'll, uh, 
we'll switch the point work for a second and what we're going to do let's just put that sorry the yellow one yeah that's what I'm looking for that one there so we we'll make that one go straight and then I'm going to unisolate the Victoria so again I must get these switches sorted out soon and we're going to bring that around all the way around excuse me thinking to myself or talking to myself so we'll open that there and then we'll bring it into this long side in here so we will make that there it's a good plan let's see if we can get that and ideally everything else stays put he says hopefully And then we'll grab those suburban coaches, which are sitting at the station, with the 262. And we'll take the diesel rail car up there as well. Bit of an unscheduled break there. My son came home from school and was uh, calling out, did I want a cup of tea? He didn't know I was filming. So we've had a cup of tea. We lost a little bit of daylight now. I am. Uh, filming during the week because I'm uh, taking a little time off work due to a, a cold that's descended upon me this week but uh, <coughs> announced for the uh, slight strange voice perhaps let's see if we can get this into the side ends here and then we'll see if we can catch up with our uh, original plan so let's bring that along there to a stop I think we're all in there let's have a look at that yeah now we need to fiddle with a bit of uh, bit of track work so let's close that one so that one goes curved I need to isolate that as well just in case it starts to creep so now I need to throw the crossover straight and we need to open the yellow one so we can get the uh, 262 out so let's make that one curved I've left the controls behind me at the other side of the railway yeah so and it's just gone almost completely dark in the, in the last 20 minutes outside that time of the year so let's let's get this to tank loco I'm aware that the last couple of videos were very long we'll try and keep this reasonably sensible let's, uh, let's roll that forward just the other side of those points there and then we'll uh, reach for the the switch and we'll straighten those and then we'll run that back beyond the crossover sitting behind that oil tank there and then I think yeah crossover curved And then we'll run forward and we'll just stop that just on the exit to the tunnel there. And I think uh, I'll sort the crossover out whilst I remember, just in case that becomes an issue later, because I'm possibly not thinking all of this through. Let's, uh, we need this one to go curved. And I think. Have I got one more? No, I think I'm good. I think we've got everything set as we need it. Let's see if we can get a sight of the locomotive though. There we go. Let's get in tight and see if we can see that valve gear over the top of the, the side walls. I do like these locomotives. This was one of these locomotives was in the f one of the first sets I had, which was uh, came from another family member when I was quite young. So they've always been uh, quite a special item for me. There we go. We haven't derailed anything. 
No, we've got it all. And then if I just close those whilst we're here, let's make those straight. Now what we want to do is get the the diesel rail car. So we want to bring the diesel rail car around. Let's open. Oop, wrong way. Those ones, so we'll follow that around there. We'll come around this way because we can. Sorry about that, I just uh, had an uncontrollable coughing fit. Let's change that one. This time, let's, uh, let's get the diesel rail car underway. So let's see if we can get out in front of it. So I think it is that time of year when there are many sort of uh, colds and everybody's coughing and spluttering around you, but uh, it eventually gets you. Looking terrific coming around the back of the turntable here. I quite like that route round through there. Not too bad on the diamond. That's going to come through the tunnel, we'll just go slightly elevated with that. Let's see if we can get in low and see that climb up. Need a slight change in the sound of the motor with the weight of it there. And there you go. Definite change in sound when it's completely up there, all very rapidly. So ideally, this will run in on the far side of the station there now. We can stop that there, and then, if my thinking is correct, what I need to do now is change the points, and then I can take the uh, the suburban train back down onto level ground. Let's see if we can get a slightly higher view there. And I have noticed this one does pick up quite a bit of pace once it gets on the incline. Some of the models do and some of the models don't. Or, or should I say, some are more controllable than others when they're running down the slope. So this is where it will pick up speed. There we go. And back off the power a little. And there we'll run that around. And we'll get that onto the inside line. All nicely behaved. stand back a bit. So what I'm going to do is just stop it before the points at the corner there and we'll, uh, we won't use this loop. Let's, uh, let's bring that in along there. We'll stop that there and we'll just have one final fiddle with the points here I think. So we'll make that one straight and we will leave that one running around there and I'm going to split it into two railways again that all looks good so we just need to split the power so we'll make that run as two railways so ideally 262 is going to stay put Actually, no, I can let the 262 run. Let's let it run round and round. Let's see if that'll settle. Although those Mark II couplings may come adrift by themselves, we'll have to keep an eye on that. just beginning to pick up a little bit of pace. So we'll just take the edge off that. 
There we go. And now, if the thinking's correct, I just need to switch the points up here. So we'll switch those up there. We'll see the 262 go past there. We will take this further around the loop. Stop that there, we'll switch the points again. Remember to turn the controller in the correct direction. And we'll bring the uh, rail car back onto level ground. This one is slightly more controlled than the uh, tank locomotive on the descent. So let's stop that one there and we'll, we'll have a fiddle with a, one more set of points. So if we do that one, and now I think let's roll this the opposite way around the railway. Ooh, something has derailed. I wasn't expecting that. Ah. I forgot a set of points. It was all going so well. But on the plus side, the 262s are moving around behind me really, really nicely. Let's see if we can uh, solve this problem. So I forgot this set of points here. Sorry, I'm looking in the wrong place. That's it. There we have it. Let's back that up again. We've got a, a full derailment. Well, it's not really toy trains if you don't have a derailment. Yeah, so I came through there, I managed to change that one. I'd forgotten all about that one. So, let's try that again from a different angle. All works nicely when you get the points in the right direction. Gentle stop in the double O station. And that's probably long enough for the passengers to get on and off. But I think that's probably about it for this time. But thanks again for watching, and again, I really hope you're all enjoying the festive season. And if you look back again next time, we'll have something else to have a look at and play with on the railway. Well that was almost the end and I forgot about all of those station buildings I'd been fiddling around with over there and completely forgot to mention them. And I, then I thought we should probably have a look at the, a couple of the other catalogues as well. So I got those out there. We got the 1958 one and the 1962 one because we, we mentioned a number of things about the, uh, well not a number of things, I have talked about the earlier set, the R3M, and possibly having um, standard track, and it, it doesn't, and we, we talked about the, uh, the later RS27 with the diesel rail car, uh, and having Super 4 track in it, and it definitely does. Let's just have a quick glance at this 1958 catalogue. We're not gonna go through the entire catalogues. So R3M diesel rail car train set, and it uh, consists of the uh, power car and the trailer car and it has a RT40 battery controller power connecting clip and 14 sections of series 3 track so it does have series 3 not not um, not standard and i think the earlier units had um, a slightly different uh, 
logo on there other than the uh, sorry uh, unlike the sort of round all of the, the the model we were looking at today like um like that one so i think if you look back on my uh, earlier video i think i've, I've got one of these with the, it looks more more like that one and also the, 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 these early ones had sort of coach bogies on the front similar to the uh, similar or if not the same as on these sort of 10 inch coaches the, that style of bogey there i think they're, they're the same as that so um let's just have a, a quick glance at that also the uh, the mark ii couplings so um here we go in the uh, 1962 catalogue and we've got uh, RS27 and if we uh, have a look at the front of there it's got a name board on it so I think at some point in the early 60s they started selling these with uh, a sheet of stickers with um, with different names on if you have a look at the insert picture there I, I do have a, a set of stickers for, for another model um, and seating units so if we have a, have a quick glance here at the, uh, at the train set. I don't know whether we can continue to keep focus on this. We've got the RS27 diesel rail car train set. It consists of the power car with built-in seating unit and the uh, trailer car also has a built-in seating unit together with the following Super 4 track. So we've got eight sections of um, our 483 double curves 14 and a bit radius, I can't quite read that that from this distance and uh, two R481 straights um, they're, they're six and a bit inches long and a power connecting clip forming an oval of 39 inches by 32 inches so it's a, it's a slightly larger oval than the uh, the uh, series three, 3 set so that's uh, 99 centimeters by 81 centimeters in metric so what was the uh, the size of the oval on this? It was 36 by 28, so a little bit larger with the with the with the Super Four. But I think that was uh, definitely worth having a look at a look at those. That really is a, a tremendous page of uh, trains. That isn't it? Very very powerful looking. They are too. So the station, as I've had some sort of time unexpectedly, I had a fiddle with this, but I can't believe I, I forgot to mention them earlier on. So I've got name boards here. My station has a variety of names. On there we've got uh, Wigan, and then we've got um, Dundee. Oh, we've got a signal box hiding over here as well. This is an old uh, red one in acetate, and uh, somebody scribbled a name on there with what looks like a paintbrush, and I can't read it. I can't work out what, what that name is. I know we've, we've looked at that before. And I've got a very old curly building, and that's been sitting on the railway for a while. Um, and I've inserted one of the, uh, the the 3D printed canopies on there. Uh, I am going to get some yellow PLA. I'm not going to over worry about the uh, the shade of yellow because all of these yellows are slightly different, and the canopies are slightly different. Some of them more, some of them have slightly more orange in them, and some of them are more lemony. So we've got a newspaper kiosk in there. And uh, what else have we got? A small board or f station fence there. That building was there for a while. And I think that one is uh, another ticket office there. We've got some nice advertising on the sides of that. And I've found some other bits of a bridge that sort of combined with the bridge I had and um, some other bits I found. We've got the uh, all the, the proper supports under the walkways and the uh, smoke deflectors underneath, some more name boards. We've got uh, Exeter and Bristol. And then what have we got on the, the signal box over there? 3D printed chimney on that one. So we've got crew on there. Water crane. I think we had a water crane at the other end as well. A line side hut there. A set of three. So I've got the, the small one there. Water towers. There's the yeah, larger line side hut. And we've got another one hiding over here next to the double O turntable. So just a bit of fiddling been going on with that so I think that's uh, makes it look quite interesting I don't know whether this is going to be the uh, the final version of the station or not so uh, it could take take a, a, a little bit of a change so uh, yeah we, we've got the brown buildings on the, on the station up here what have we got Grantham these are named we've got Grantham name boards 
on there and I think we've got Grantham on the on the other end as well yeah so I thought that was just worth having a, a little bit of a look over so I'm standing on the uh, the floorboards again let's give that diesel rail car just a little power and see if we can get that to move away just to finish off with